Hi everyone, I wanted to share with you the latest on the COVID-19 virus and something that obviously we're all talking about right now and we're all concerned with. Well, hopefully I have some more positive news here today. I've been really going through all of the research from both the conventional medicine and also functional medicine, naturopathic medicine standpoint. And again, hopefully I have some really good things to share with you here today. One of which I wanna talk about is the actual spread of the virus. Now, tremendous things are being done right now in actually Korea, and they're giving us a foundation for how we should be looking at the spread of the virus and what we can potentially do. One of the things that they're doing really well and that I'd like us to start to implement more in the United States is they're doing earlier testing. Even if people feel like they're just slightly symptomatic, they're testing people. And when they're testing people, and if they find they do have the virus, they are quarantining those people, hopefully self-quarantining those people, even if they are symptomatic free. And the reason is this, we know now, and again, this is new data, that the majority of the people affected by this virus from a mortality standpoint and a seriousness standpoint are over the age of 65. And actually the curve really starts to swing over the age of 74, 75 years old, where the average age of mortality right now is approximately 77.4 to 81 years old, depending on the source that you're looking at, which means more than ever, we need to protect and help out our parents and grandparents. So that means that even though I'm sure that they would want to see us right now, we have to socially distance ourselves, isolate ourselves, whatever you want to say it, from uh, the people that we may care the most about. And that's the truth, but it's for their protection. Remember, most people right now, if they get COVID-19, they will end up with flu-like symptoms or almost no symptoms at all. We know that the younger you are, most likely the less symptoms you have, which is why the grandkids need to stay away from the grandparents for right now. Now, the good news is this. If we do this, the people that are most susceptible are least likely then to suffer the consequences of pneumonia and potentially, obviously, increased risk of fatality and increased risk of infection. That is what we need to be concerned about most right now. We are finding now, again, as more data comes in, there are most likely five to 10 times the amount of people affected than the 372,000 cases as of March 23rd. So I wanna share with you this. The good news is, the good news is that this does not seem to be spreading at the same rate as it was, potentially because of socially distancing, social distancing, maybe. But also what we're doing is we're finding things that are working. I wanna share with those in just a moment. So my hope is that this does not spread as fast or as widespread as the actual influenza virus, and also that we're doing the right things in order to boost our immune systems because contrary to popular belief, contrary to the media, your immune system is what dictates whether you are going to end up with all the complications of COVID or not. Meaning if you have a robust immune system, if you have good mucus production, if you have enough secretory IgA, if your balance, immune system balance between what's called the Th1 and Th2 branch of the immune system, you're most likely going to be fine and you may not even have any symptoms at all. And also we're finding if you produce higher levels of melatonin, which decreases cortisol overnight like kids have, then you might even be less susceptible. So again, there's a lot we can learn from natural medicine. I wanna share some of the natural medicine findings that we're looking at right now. And then I wanna go over what happens if you do get the COVID-19 virus and the actual life-saving drugs that might be able to help you. Because remember, I've always said, and I'll always maintain that I'm an integrative health practitioner. That means when needed in acute-based circumstances, I am all for conventional medicine. I am all for the best of pharmaceuticals in the short term, never in the long term, unless it is some type of issue within the body that it's absolutely essential. But most chronic-based disease, which this is not, this is an acute-based disease, most chronic-based disease needs to be helped out through a natural-based methodology, an underlying root cause that we're looking for. What, what overflowed that rain barrel? But right now, there isn't necessarily enough time to empty that rain barrel fully, although you can do so with good foundational eating now, you know, proper exercising, detoxification, all those things. Yes, do that, but not to the extreme right now. Now is not the time to do that. I do recommend a seasonal detox with the spring, but not to the degree that you start to wear down the body, okay? So I'll be doing mine, uh, and for sure our community will, but you don't wanna go overboard right now, just like you don't wanna go overboard with exercise, and you wanna, of course, get your sleep. So what are we finding right now? Well, right now there are three studies out of China that's actually looking at high-dose vitamin C, with the COVID virus. Now, why? Well, vitamin C 
boosts the immune system. It boosts detoxification. It actually acts or has a byproduct of hydrogen peroxide in the body. And hydrogen peroxide, we know, essentially kills pathogens, viruses, uh, bacteria inside of the body. So it's one more reason why vitamin C absolutely does work. Now, again, I'm not telling you it's going to prevent this disease, and I'm not telling you that it's going to cure the disease. What I'm giving you are things that help to clinically boost the immune system. What we're also finding is this, and this study, and I'll link everything up, up at stephencabral.com forward slash virus. So again, I will give you all of the specific pharmaceutical names. I will give you all the natural uh, supplement-based names, et cetera, at stephencabral.com forward slash virus. It's just an easier website that everybody can go to and share rather than it going all over the internet. So here's the thing. We know vitamin C works, okay? We're, and I'll share with some of the newer things right now with you. Um, one of the new ones before I get to zinc is melatonin. We're now looking at why melatonin might be effective as an anti-inflammatory, as a uh, one to balance circadian rhythm, as something that helps with hormone production and hormone regulation within the body. It's a natural anti-cancer. So why would melatonin work? Well, melatonin helps to calm the nervous system of the body as well. It helps to decrease cortisol. If we decrease cortisol, we can then naturally boost the immune system. We can start to produce more secretory IgA, which will then pick up the virus as it begins to enter the body. And the body can then to do what it does best, which is produce antibodies to the virus itself. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to prevent it, but what it does mean is this, is it allows your body that 24 to 72 hours to recognize the antigen, and to recognize the um, actual pathogen itself, the virus itself, and then to begin to produce the proper antibodies or antivirals for that virus. And that's very, very important because remember, you can still have symptoms, right? When we get a virus or even the flu, well, we can get the aches and pains, we can get the fever, but now the biggest difference with COVID is sometimes the cough or the higher fever that's not controllable. That's very, very important to look at as well. And before I uh, get on to my, my next one, which is zinc, is that, again, and I believe this, I wanna make sure too that we're not using ibuprofen in this type of case, in this type of scenario. It can act as an immunosuppressant. Um, it's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. It can affect certain parts of the body. Now, if your fever is starting to get too high, and again, this is not medical advice, you should call your medical doctor or go to your hospital if you do need that type of medical advice, we know that acetaminophen can control fevers. Now, at the same time, a fever is naturally produced by the body in order to speed up the flow of white blood cells, in order to actually raise core temperature and kill the virus itself. So let's be careful with how much we want to lower a fever until it starts to get to higher dangerous levels. Now, acetaminophen, though, has its downsides as well. And acetaminophen can actually start to deplete uh, the body of glutathione. And glutathione is naturally produced by the liver as the mother or the larger antioxidant and helps with detoxification of the body. So if needed, it's still a better choice, it seems, over an ibuprofen like an Advil. But right now, uh, we want to be careful with a lot of the medications that we're using. So I'll get to the medications that do show some promise in just a moment. Zinc now, we know, and again, this study, it was either out of Korea or Japan, we're looking at some of the early warning signs of someone potentially getting uh, the COVID-19 virus with symptoms in a younger population. The symptoms seem to be a lack of smell or a lack of taste, which again, this is not proven, but that goes hand in hand with zinc depletion. And why would zinc get depleted? Well, zinc gets depleted whenever the body needs to ramp up the immune system. So it makes total sense. So we've been recommending all along zinc, vitamin C, vitamin D, daily foundational protocol, because it gives you all of those nutrients. Remember, that is what supports the immune system on a daily basis. Now, if you find yourself unwell, you can boost those. You can also use your oregano oil. You can use uh, your licorice root. You can use your mulein extract. Um, and a few others now of notes that I think are important to look at is manuka honey, yes, but also ginger and ginger root extract. Ginger could be potentially helpful, and the reason is this, that ginger is, it works with the uh, liver, it works with the kidneys, and it's also drying. And drying can help with a lot of mucus-based production. It has antiviral properties, it has some antifungal properties, not well associated in the research, but it's certainly there. So those are a few more in terms of natural-based health. And people have been asking me about olive leaf and about L-lysine and about monolaurin. Yes, all of those are used to fight viruses. They actually destroy the virus itself or they stop the virus, virus from replicating. I did a podcast and I linked that up at the bottom of stephencabral.com forward slash 
uh, virus. Now, it'll be there. Again, it's not medical advice. I can't give you the medical advice. I can't diagnose. I can't treat, treat, treat. I can't prevent. I can't cure, right? So that is not within my scope of practice. Your licensed medical doctor is the only one that can make those types of claims. So we want to use the best of natural health. And we also then want to start to use the best of pharmaceuticals if needed. And again, this is mainly for the immune compromised. Um, it could be potentially for young, young children, or it could be for our uh, parents and grandparents over the age of 65, and especially over the age of 75, that may need it the most. So we're finding um, some remarkable, remarkable results in very small studies. So I just want you to know this. They're very small studies, and they're all experimental right now. But inside of the U.S., we have uh, two drugs that have been in use for malaria called uh, chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine. And hydroxychloroquine um, has been used for malaria in the past. And we're using other forms now, I believe in the form of Plaquenil for rheumatoid arthritis. And it can actually be used for uh, lupus. And I think they're using a little bit now for psoriasis. But what it does is it, well, it starts to actually, um, there's, there's two ways in which it works. So one is they believe it changes the pH of the tissues. Now, very interesting, right? Because we talk about this all the time in natural health. A virus can't replicate in a more alkaline solution. But again, in conventional medicine, they want to tell us all the time. And again, I know this myself. The blood maintains a pH of 7.356. Well, we know that. But the tissues is completely different. The more acidic, the more a virus can replicate, which is why we're recommending all of those minerals. Alkalizing vitamin C, your electrolytes, you know, your buffers, your green juices, all of those do matter, right? We're looking at dark chocolate, prunes. Uh, what else has been shown? Flax seeds, blueberries. Um, there's a few others as well that are being shown right now to be helpful as well with ACE inhibitors. Okay, so let me just give you a couple more though. There's a drug out of Cuba being used um, that, let me see if I have the name right in front of me. Uh, this one is uh, interferon alpha 2. Okay, so this has been used in the past with other viruses as well. There is one that was used for Ebola and that was uh, remdesivir. So I'll link that up as well. We're looking at that, smaller clinical trials. We're looking at um, hydroxychloroquine uh, that I mentioned before, and actually um, used in conjunction with azithromycin. And when used in conjunction with the azithromycin, this was a small study, 36 people, I believe, was actually shown to be remarkably effective. So that's another one for us to be on the lookout for. There's actually a Japanese antiviral drug, which is preventing the virus from replicating. Again, all small studies, all experimental, but within two to three more weeks, we'll have more data. And that's why you see a lot of stuff online right now that's saying, oh, could be this or could be that. Remember, anything that compromises your immune system, anything, uh, gut permeability issues, uh, autoimmune, heavy metals, like anything that compromises your immune system, excessive alcohol, smoking, lack of sleep, anything that compromises your immune system could lead to an exaggeration of symptoms with COVID and more potential. That's why people are grasping at straws right now. An imbalanced immune system, a weak immune system, a lack of reserves, a weaker constitution, anyone that smokes with lungs are affected, all of that leads to greater mortality and more potentiation of symptoms for COVID-19. Those are the people that we need to reserve the hospital beds for. We need to reserve the ventilators for. So be careful with exposure to people 60 years or older, 65 years or older. So again, I will... I promise you that I will bring you the unbiased research, that I will bring you the best from natural medicine, the best from conventional medicine, and we will be figuring this out over the next couple of weeks. I'm very optimistic right now. I'm optimistic that, yes, it will continue to spread, but the spread looks a little bit slower. And I'm hoping that we're able to, uh, we'll do enough distancing, we're able to get back uh, to our normal way of life. It won't be right away. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm do hoping that we get control of this from both a natural perspective, boosting our immune system, keeping ourselves healthy, and also from any type of drug we find that is able to help those people most at risk. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, I've done two more videos before this on uh, proper diet, exercise, stress reduction, tox removal, etc. Please do check that out at stephencabral.com forward slash viruses. I will be back soon with another video update in about a week or so. Take care, everyone.